What is up YouTube? I'm Galadite74 here bringing you our semi-finals battle of the PEBA. This week we take on Tangula Boots, coach of the Twin Leaf Tangulas. We ended off the regular season with a 7-4 record, while he ended off the season with an 8-3 record. He was the one team above us in the Sword Conference, so he is the first overall seed while I am the second. So this is going to be a pretty intense battle to say the least. To quickly recap for you guys, we did have our quarterfinals battle last week that went up on the channel, and obviously since this video exists, that means we won that battle. I highly recommend you go check that out because that battle was a pretty good one to say the least. And also, we did lose to Troy week 10. I just dropped my marker. It was a beam battle. It was a pretty fun battle, but we did end up losing, so hopefully we can end up getting our revenge here in the semifinals in our more serious battle. So that is our quick recap of this video. I'm going to throw up the current bracket on screen now as of the making of this video. We are facing Tangla Boots, obviously. And in the other conference, it is the Chicago Strength Sap versus the Cleveland Escavaliers. So that is Aquarius and Slick Panther. Their battle happened before ours, but I am not going to spoil the result because Aquarius is uploading videos. So if I don't plug the actual video itself, I will plug Aquarius' channel in the description below. I do that every week, so... Make sure to go check out that battle to see the result of that. But we are here for our battle, and that is going to be it for all the extra stuff, and we're going to get into the team builder. The way that Boots' is team is structured is definitely more unique compared to some other teams. The only other team that is remotely similar to it is Aquarius's, is that they, he doesn't really have the high point Mon that leads the team and everything else kind of supports it. Everything on his team is around the same point value and it supports each other. And I think that's really awesome the way you can build like that. But I'm going to list off his team now. Boots' team consists of Matthew Zemus, Mega Altaria, Gliscor, Scizor, Nihaligo, Alakazam, Snorlax, Rotom Heat, Verzion Zemus, Lantern Zemus, and Kray Dilly. Now the sixth I expect him to bring consists of Manaphy, Mega Altaria, Gliscor, Scizor, Snorlax, and Verizion. He could switch out the Snorlax for Rotom Heat, and he could switch out the Verzion for either Nihaligo or Alakazam. But overall, I'm pretty set on these six mons coming. I would be shocked if he, like, brought a few. He could bring, like, Lantern for Greninja, but for the overall team comp, I don't think it would be good for him to bring that. But that's what I'm basically set on. This team, as I mentioned in my last battle against Troy, is that this is he's very comfortable with some of the mons on this team, namely Mega Altaria, Scizor, and Manaphy. So I fully expect those three to come. By the way, when I say Troy and Boots, that, that's just the same person, obviously. So there's that. Uh, one thing that is scary for my team is Gliscor, uh, Mega Altaria if it gets set up, and Scizor. And another thing is Scarf Verizion. If I, once I get into this team builder, you guys will notice that I don't even bring Volcarona. So Verizion might be a bit of a problem. And lastly, his team is a bit setup heavy, but that's not a bad thing consist considering that everything on his team sets up. So preventing setting up is going to be hard. Uh, there's, I mean, a few mods on setup, but you get the gist. Like 9 out of 10 times, most of his mods are setting up. And he can pick and choose which one he wants to set up. The The most dangerous one is probably the Mega Altaria because I don't have the greatest counterplay to Dragon Dance. But I'll get into that in my team. And that is my opponent's team for this week. And I'm going to go over my team. The team I am deciding to rock with this week consists of Reuniclus, Mega Dianti, Basimian, Tentacruel, Ash Greninja, and Hippowdon. The first one on the team, as I just mentioned, is going to be the Reuniclus. Reuniclus is rocking the Assault Vest with the Regenerator ability, Max HP, 128 Spit Attack with a Modest Nature, 124 Spit Def, and 8 in Speed, moves being a Psy Shock, Energy Ball, Hidden Power, Ice, and Flash Cannon. 9 times out of 10, this Reuniclus at least can trade 1v1. It basically walls his entire team that is not named Scizor. I didn't bother to run HP Fire over HP Ice because I wasn't going to be staying in on Scizor anyway. He's probably just going to U-turn out, and even though I can live a U-turn at full health, I don't want to take a U-turn from full health. So, I have to get rid of Scizor in order for this Reuniclus to put work. It switches into Neo Higo and tanks hits, it switches into Alakazam and tanks hits, it switches into Manaphy. The only thing that's scary about Manaphy is a plus 3 Walterium Z. Anything else is not that scary from that Mon. I can take it some Glass Core, even though I don't want to, because Glass Core could definitely hold Knock Off, and if it's got Knock Off, I don't want my Assault Vest being lost. If I lose my Assault Vest, it loses a lot of uh, viability. I can tank it from Lantern for days, Rotom Heat. I can take a Leaf Blade from Verizion, but that is also a Z Captain, so I gotta be a little bit careful of that as well. 
And again, it just walls so much of his team. And it even walls like the Altaria and Snorlax to an extent. I just can't hit them back too hard. Uh, Snorlax particularly, because Altaria hits kind of hard. So That is the Reuniclus. It's very important to pivot around his team with this thing and to scout for moves. Since I have the Assault Vest and Regenerator, I can switch out and get my health back. So that is Reuniclus for this week. Next up, we have Mega Diancy. Mega Diancy is rocking the Diancy, obviously, with max special attack, 240 speed with Timid Nature, and 16 in HP. Moves being Moonblast, Power Gem, Earth Power, and Magnet Rise. This pretty much goes in on his team as well. Even though I do not have in power fires, Moonblast and Power Gem, one of the two, Power Gem particularly, is going to be doing a lot of damage to Scizor. It's going to be doing around 40%, and that is some nice, nice chip on Scizor. So I definitely don't mind if it switches in. The only thing that is a free switch and is the reason I think it's coming is Snorlax. Snorlax can come in and tank any hit from Mega Diancy, though he does have to be pretty careful of a Diamond Storm Snor Mega Diancy, though I'm not actually bringing that. And I do have Magnet Rise on the set because I had I wanted to put Substitute, but I realized that it definitely didn't work last week, and I don't think he's going to give me a free Substitute with this Mega Diancy set. So having Mega Magnet Rise on here allows me to offensively beat the Gliascore 1v1 because the Glassicor is not going to be holding any other move to touch me. And again, it just goes through Mega Altaria, it goes through Verizion, it goes through Rotom Heat, it goes through a lot of his team to the point where I can beat it. So that is the Mega Diancy set this week. Next up we have our Passimian. Passimian is our wild card of the week. We are running Max Attack, Adamant Nature, 244 Speed, the little bit in bulk with the Scarf, moves being Close Combat, Knock Off, U-Turn, and Gunk Shot. His Close Combat switching. Mega Altaria, Glassicor. Uh, Mega Altaria, I could predict with Gunk Shot, or I could switch in to Hippowdon, which I will get into in a bit later. And for Scizor, I have a few other ways to deal with Scizor as well. And it's, wait, did I say Scizor? No, Gliscor. For Gliscor, I have my uh, Greninja and Titan, and you, you'll see for uh, Gliscor a bit later. Gliscor is a bit of a problem for my team. But outside of those two, nothing wants to take a close combat. Uh, let me, let's let's listen them off real quick. Cradily basically dies. Lantern is a little bit of chip dies, Verzion basically dies, Rotom Heat doesn't want to take it, Snorlax dies, Alakazam, you're not going to switch an, an Alakazam in on a Passimian, and a Scarf Alakazam would be a little bit weird in this matchup. I could be see a Sash set, but I would probably U-turn out on that. Nihiligo friggin' dies, Scizor can't take two unless it's very, very bulky, and if it's a bulky Scizor, it's not as threatening as a really offensive one. And again, Glass Gormek Altaria can take it, and man, if you can't take two. So this Passimian close combat is going to go in on his team. I'm not going to click it recklessly early. I'm going to click U-turn a lot. But if I get his team a bit lower, then close combat is looking very spammable against his team. This is basically the win con of the week is Passimian. Next up, we have Tentacruel. Tentacruel is rocking the Eye of Berry with Liquid Ooze. Max HP, 156 defense, 40 in speed death with a calm nature, and 64 in speed. Moves being Scald, a Sludge Wave, Hidden Power, Fire, and Toxic. My 7th Mon was Rotom Frost, my 8th Mon was Volk. I wanted Volk on this team, but I couldn't fit Rapid Spin on the set because this Tentacle is here for a Scizor, and without HP Fire, that would have me banking on Scald Burns. While that is somewhat reliable, somewhat, it, I'd rather have a reliable move to at least 2 shot a Scizor, unless it's, again, very bulky. That's why I did that. I also run the Eye of Papa over the Black Sledge because I wouldn't be shocked, even if he brought a very, like, the Choice Bandit Scizor set. I could take any 2 hits... And the eye Papa will prop that back up. As long as he doesn't click knockoff, then we might have problems. But knockoff on Scizor, that's an easy switch into a lot of my other teammates. So uh, the moves are pretty nice. I can wall Cradilly basically, which is a pretty free switch into that. It walls Manaphy. I, this is calc to where I can take a plus three Psychic from full health. That has to be a full, but I can take a plus three Psychic. And if it's Psychic MZ, then Reunion Class walls the Manaphy. So those two are going to work in conjunction to beat the Manaphy this week. And again, it is here for Scizor. It's here for a special Mega Altaria, though I do think he's going to bring a physical Mega Altaria. But for the off chance, it is special. It is full free switching every time. Next up, we have Greninja. Greninja is rocking the Expert Belt because that is the only item I ever run on this damn Pokemon. Max Special Attack, 240 Speed with a Naive Nature to outspeed Alakazam. Moves being Skull, Dark Pulse, Ice Beam, and Low Kick. Man, if I could run a Hidden Power Fire, I would do it immediately, but you know game mechanics right but this actually looks really good against this team too this is what i put in place for volcarona in the end because it does its job very well outside of beating verizion offensively but outside of that greninja beats a lot of his team i put low kick on there because with the expert belt it is almost a two shot on snorlax and snorlax isn't gonna one shot me back 
This basically beats Rotom Heat with a little bit of chip. It beats Alakazam as my main offensive way to beat that. Nihiligo if it's chipped because Nihiligo is especially fat, so I can't definitely not one-shot that thing. Scizor, I would have to bug bite me or U-turn, and that would force it to take a hit. So there's that. If it's low, then I can beat it that way. It offensively beats Gliscor, which is a really big selling point because Gliscor is kind of difficult for my team. Ice Beam does half to Mega Altaria, and Manaphy is kind of scary for Greninja, but Greninja overall has a really good offensive matchup this week. And yeah, that is the Greninja. And lastly, we have Hippowdon. Hippowdon is rocking max HP, max defense in Mitch Nature. With the Rocky Helmet and Sand Force, moves being Earthquake, Rowan, a slack off, and Toxic. I wanted the Rocks, but I felt that Rocks weren't really the most important this week because he had a Gliscor, and Gliscor is a free switch in every day of the week to this Apaldon, and he could, if I set up Rocks, he could just defog him away. So it wasn't really worth it in the end. But outside of Gliscor, this is here to mainly tank on the Mega Altaria. It is not the most reliable way to take on Mega Altaria, but it's a way regardless. I can Toxic, and if he's got Heal Bell, he's going to be missing some coverage moves, so that is very crucial to note. This takes on Scizor, though, if Scizor is the very last Mon, he could possibly Roost stall me, and if he's like a SD Roost set, that could be a little bit scary, but outside of that scenario, Hippowdon takes on Scizor, as well, it gives me an actual decent switch into Snorlax, because at this point, I didn't really have one, so... That is the Hippowdon set. It does give Virizion a free switch, which does kind of scare me if it's a Scarf Virizion. But we're going to deal with that when we get to the game. Although it's definitely not going to be easy this week. The main goal is to get rid of Mega Altaria and Gliscor and have Passimian come in and click close combat a bunch of times. It won't be easy. That is our goal to make it to the finals. This team builder is getting very long. We're going to head over to Pokemon Showdown and watch the battle. Alright, we have arrived at Pokemon Showdown, and he did not bring the Gliscor, so that is huge. He did bring the Virizion. His only close combat switch in is Altaria, though, so we do have to keep that in mind. We have to try to get rid of this Altaria as fast as possible, so Passimian can spam CC. I am going to leave the Passimian, because I can at least U-turn out on anything that doesn't die to CC, which he does lead off with the Mana Fee, so I am going to just click U-turn this turn to try and pivot out of this matchup as he does go into the Mega Altaria. By the way, I just want to mention that this team build, the team builder is probably a little bit longer than the actual battle. Just going to throw that out there. Uh, I'm going to go Mega Dynasty to keep up the pressure, and I was expecting a Snorlax, but he ends up going out into Cradilly. And Cradilly tanks his hit pretty well, so that's... I'm seeing that this is going to be his main switch into Mega Diancie. I'm going to go into Tentacruel because I basically wall this Cradilly every time. As he does click Giga Drain and my Liquid Ooze is going to activate so he doesn't get any of that health back. And this turn I can fire off a free Toxic because even if he wants to go out into Scizor, I have the HP Fire for that thing. As he does to get, decide to get up rocks. It's not really too big of a deal, but you know. Uh... I'm starting to realize here, as he does go straight into Manaphy, which this is fine as well, as I do click Sludge Wave, it does under half, showing that this Manaphy's got a little bit of bulk in it, not too much, but a bit. He does have a Tail Glow, as I do fire off a Toxic, and now this thing is on a timer. Now, I, I had a choice to make, I could have went into Reuniclus here, which I kind of should have, because I do die to this Psychic, and I this is like the one week I didn't bring Black Sludge, and if I was Black Sludge, and I was at full health, I would have been able to live the hit, so that is pretty unfortunate that happened. Luckily, I can come in here and just click close combat and claim a kill unless Altaria comes out. But he allows me to just sack the Manaphy. He just sacks the Manaphy, so that's pretty cool. Now he brings in the Altaria. I have to switch out. And we're going to a pout on it is my main way to deal with this Altaria defensively. As Altaria is just going to fire off a return. I am Rocky Helmet, so he is going to be taking some chip damage. My dog is in the background. I apologize for that. But he goes into Verizion, and that is a free switch in as I get back all the way up to 100. Now, I, 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 I go to Reuniclus, right? Reuniclus doesn't have much to do outside of take hits from this Verizion at this point, but he is going to end up being a Z-move, as I thought the Manaphy was, and I am not living this. I was On my calc, I am able to live a plus two Leaf Blade, but I'm not going to live the Grass MZ. I should have went to Mega Diancie originally, despite how weird that sounds, uh, and expecting the Swords Dance, because you see here that Verizion actually doesn't die to the Moonblast, as it wasn't supposed to, because Verizion's kind of fat, especially. And now I'm down in a pretty bad spot as it's 5-3. to three. But luckily I am going to go to Greninja and I click low kick expecting Snorlax. But he does give me the Verzeon, which means I do get my Battle Bomb boost. And now I am a little bit stronger. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Scizor comes out and, you know, I don't have Hidden Power Fire. So I have to switch out. And I'm going to go into Hit Poudon. Hit Poudon is my only wall left on the team. As granted, it does wall his physical attackers pretty well. But 
I do have to be a bit careful of setup, especially on the scissor, because this is going to be an SD bug bite scissor of all things. As I do fire off an earthquake just to see how much it's going to do. It's a little more of a bulkier scissor than anything. It's not fully offensive or anything. Uh, he clicks roost. I'm going to click slack off. And expecting him to get a little bit greedy with the swords dance, I'm going to click whirlwind because whirlwinding him out of this predicament would be pretty nice for me. As I am just going to whirlwind and this scissor is not going to be able to do anything. Snorlax comes out and I can just fire off a toxic on this thing and I miss. And he goes for toxic and he hits. So that was a sucky turn here. In the long run, it doesn't really matter too much, but in the sense of the battle, I almost click Toxic again, and that would have been a pretty bad play. But I do go into Basimian, I tank the Body Slam, I don't get paralyzed, and this Snorlax just drops to a CC. He's not going to switch in as Mega Altaria, because at this point, Mega Altaria sort of wins him the game. Cradilly's not doing much, but Scizor uh, and Mega Altaria can definitely still be threats, though scissor doesn't really want to be taking a scald and a close combat from my two offensive mons left it's mainly this mega altaria as here i should have gone for the toxic but he sets up two dragon dances and i just click earthquake and it does a sizable amount he's a really offensive mega altaria but man i, sh I should have clicked toxic because now i'm gonna click slack off here try to get as much health as i possibly can and even though he does click roost he would have been at 88 with toxic and i could have just start clicking slack off and with the combination of the Rocky Helmet and the Toxic Damage, he would have I would have possibly been able to win a Toxic War exchange, even though I did have Toxic on myself. But unfortunately, I didn't do that, and now he is at a plus two, plus two. And this is basically going to be the game. He's going to just click Return two times as Return nukes my last offensive mons. And spoiler alert, we are going to lose 3-0 this game. And that is going to be it for our PEBA run. But GG to Tangela Boots. I definitely had a really, really fun battle despite losing. Before the season even started, I did say I wanted to face Boots. It was put on the schedule. We had a meme battle. And not only did we have a meme battle, we had a serious battle in our semifinals game. And they both went uh, Troy's way, which kind of sucks. But maybe in our next season together, whatever this league is, we will be able to beat him in that. Uh, a few things I could have done differently in this battle was be a little more aggressive on the Verizion. It... In that point in the battle, it still seemed like Scarf Verizion could have been a thing. So I still kind of stand by my play, but in the sense that it wasn't, Mega Dianti was realistically the right play. Because then I could have clicked Moonblast, and did this, I would have done the same thing, but I still would have had Reuniclus in the back. And that could have been helpful as a sack to Mega Altaria later, if I ended up clicking Toxic on the Altaria as well. So if I did those two things combined, if I possibly could have won. It still would have been close, because Bullet Punch is doing so much to Passimian. But that's probably what it would have came down to. But again, GG to Tangle of Boots. Good luck in the finals. You are definitely well-deserving of being the PEBA champion, as well as his opponent next week, who, again, I'm not going to say. Aquarius is going to upload. It's either going to be Aquarius or Slick Panther. Make sure you guys go check that out. It's going to be in the description below, either the battle or the channel. But that is going to be it for the battle portion of the video. I am going to do a quick recap of my Season 3 team, as I am going to throw up on screen now. I'm not going to read off every single stat because one, you guys can read, and two, that would take too long. But definitely the MVP of this season has got to go to Hippowdon. Hippowdon had 13 kills and 5 deaths, and it did so much passive work to the point where it just it helped me clutch up some wins. Hippowdon was a really good member of the team this, this season, even though it basically did the same thing each week. It's just a good staple. I love using Hippowdon so much. I have it in the APM. I've used it in the IBA. It's just such a reliable defensive wall. And another really close candidate for the MVP was Mega Dianci. Mega Dianci had 12 kills and 9 deaths. Even though it did die a lot, 12 kills is pretty decent for the way I used it. I feel like I could have used it a bit better, but I still think it did really well this season. Uh, I enjoyed using Mega Dianci in the pad on a lot, obviously. I enjoyed using Rotom Frost. Uh, Reuniclus, when I picked it up, that was a great transaction in my opinion. I love Reuniclus, and I even put work in with it. Uh, Tangrowth was fun while I used it, and even Basimian was kind of cool, even though I didn't get to use it too much. Uh, Greninja, Greninja put in work, even though I still don't like Greninja even after the season. It's just a boring mod, in my opinion. And I did enjoy Tentacruel, and Tentacruel did put a lot of work in. Uh, I probably wouldn't draft it again, but I definitely did enjoy using it this season, to say the least. And lastly, for the last two mods, uh, Volcarona and Haxorus. Uh, I did enjoy using Volcarona. I really did, and even prepping for it was kind of fun, but it did kind of underwhelm me in the battlefield, as well as Haxorus. Haxorus did kind of underwhelm me in prep and when I brought it, 
didn't get to do much in some of the battles I brought it to, and overall, I probably wouldn't draft Haxorus again either. And if I draft Volcarona, I would probably draft some better hazard support. But Volcarona still put some works in. Despite ha only having four kills and nine deaths, it definitely set the stage for Greninja or Diancie to pick up those kills. It definitely chipped down a lot of my opponent's teams. So to say that Volcarona did nothing would be completely false. But that is my... Oh, and Bidoof. Bidoof's there. Bidoof's the MVP. That, that, I don't know why I didn't even think about that. But that is our recap of the season. Again, thank you to everyone who's been watching my PEBA videos throughout the entire regular season and the playoffs. It means a whole lot to me. In regards to the channel, IBA is currently running on the channel right now, and we do have 8 p.m. streams, and once the playoffs start for 8 p.m., I will probably upload 8 p.m. playoffs, and there's that. And we have a new draft league coming to the league. It's actually on Tuesday. I'm going to be uploading a draft analysis, so make sure you're hyped for that. We have a sick team for that draft, but we'll get into that Tuesday. But thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you like Pokemon Draft League content, consider subscribing to the channel. That's all I got for you guys. Once again, thank you to everyone for watching PEBA this season. I'm going to head out of here. Have a fantastic day, YouTube.